Hello and welcome to another episode of our Women in STEM series. My name is Kaylee Peel and I'm the Director of Development for the Linda Hall Library. Today we have Joanna Chalaha, Associate Professor of Biology at Rockhurst University. Joanna, welcome and thanks for being here. Thanks. So tell me a little bit about your career background. What made you pursue a career in, uh, as a biology professor and was that your choice? Was academia always kind of the, the star that you were going toward? Um, in initially, no. So. I always loved science in high school and took all the science classes I could get my hands on, get enrolled in. Uh, and when it came time to go to college, I didn't really have any direction or any mm -hmm. advice. And I ended up declaring a major in psychology, um, having no idea what that was or what kind of career you would do um, with, with that degree. And I really floundered my first year of college. I went to a big university. And so after that first year, I transferred to a smaller school still completely lost. I transferred to be an athlete. Wow. And when I was enrolled in two science classes that first year uh, of my sophomore year, and one of my science professors came up to me and kind of started telling me about undergraduate research and this opportunity to do research with him. And it really just sparked this flame, like reignited the flame I think I had in high school. And I've kind of found that direction. And I started doing research with him for the next three years of my undergrad. And kind of in that journey, I realized, oh, this is, this is a really cool opportunity. I think this is what I will do for my job and for wow. my career. And I kind of went on in graduate school to, kind of with that trajectory, mm -hmm. to go and be a college professor. That's amazing. And it's nice that you had a champion kind of find you, identify you, and kind of mentor you throughout that. That's amazing. I think that's something that we often talk about at the library, but with a lot of other um, people who are through this series. We need mentorship and we need champions to kind of help find that North Star for young people. Mm -hmm. So that's great. Um, so tell me a little bit about what that experience was like. When you were going through and pursuing your degree in biology, were there a lot of women um, also pursuing that degree? And has that kind of changed over time? What does that look like? Yeah, I would say when I was, during my master's and my PhD, uh, it was a pretty good mix of, of men and women in my graduate programs, uh, probably close to 50-50. Uh, and I had very strong female mentors as well uh, throughout my, my graduate education. But I still, I, I never really realized that there was a hurdle mm -hmm. for women in academia because I'd had such great support mm -hmm. um, systems. My family, my mentors, and my peers, um, we kind of all just encouraged each other. Yeah. And so I do felt like, I do feel like I had um, kind of an advantage there that people did just support us mm -hmm. and um, want to see us succeed. And you mentioned mentors earlier, and that's something that I think is really, really important in my journey. Mm -hmm. um, having a good mentor or multiple mentors that can help lift you up and support you and give you room to grow, but also give you guidance to, um, to kind of help you in, you know, get the, the tools that you need and advance your career. I think that's so important and criti critical for anyone in science, but especially for, for young women. I know, I totally agree with you. Yeah. So when it comes to the demographics that you're seeing come through your mm -hmm. classes now at Rockhurst, mm -hmm. Have there been tra trends or increases when it comes to that? I know that um, I'm asking because I've interviewed several women who are in architecture, for example, mm -hmm. and they're saying, you know, architecture specifically, we're really seeing an uptick of young women who are getting degrees and who are going to school and, and navigating that industry. Mm -hmm. Are you seeing something similar when it comes to the field of biology? Yeah, I would actually agree with that in my classroom. I would say that we have seen a uh, quite a bit of a shift in the number of females pursuing degrees, not only in biology, but also in all of the other sciences at mm -hmm. Rockhurst. I definitely think that there are uh, issues in terms of retaining women mm -hmm. in those careers and allowing women to move into more advanced um, degrees in some of those uh, disciplines of science. In biology specific, specifically, we are seeing a lot more women pursue biology degrees at Rockhurst. Do you have, I know it's just kind of an anecdotal question, but do you, why are there, why is there a fall off? Do you kind of have um, a reasoning for that or? I think broadly as a society, there is um, maybe a bit less support for women as they advance in their careers. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that's one of the issues that women in STEM face mm -hmm. is um, this kind of lack of support 
or limited support for women um, as they get older. Um, and we do start to see fewer females retained in STEM mm -hmm. throughout um, their, w as they age. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Yeah. So aside from, you know, mentorship, um, how are some ways, what are some ways, I guess, that, you know, you or maybe Rockhurst University is really helping support students so that you don't see the fall off and that you do yeah. see them kind of experience a more robust opportunity and kind of like access to those things? Yeah. Um, it's not unique to Rockhurst necessarily, but sure. I do think that we do a really great job of it. We have a great support system. Mm -hmm. um, we have faculty that serve as mentors and, and um, advisors. We have a kind of specific programming tailored towards uh, career exploration um, and it just letting students know about a diversity of opportunities. Um, even if you have an idea of what you want to do with your career, that might not come to fruition. You know, you have to keep your, your eyes open, keep the doors open, explore different options. And so that's part of what I do, aside from teaching in the classroom, mm -hmm. is uh, I help organize a lot of activities that um, help students with career exploration, understanding what graduate school is, networking with um, different career experts in the industries across the Kansas City area so that students can start to explore what other career options are out there other than maybe the one thing that they, they know of. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. I think it needs to be more holistic, right? And that's definitely what you're describing. Um, especially whenever we're trying to, I, I, so many of the, the career exploration series and tools that we use here at the library, we are talking about you've, you know being flexible, mm -hmm. being nimble, and you probably aren't going to stay in that one specific job or career your entire life. Right. So what does it look like to add different tools to that tool belt so that you can kind of move forward and explore different things? So that's great to hear that you guys yeah. are doing that. So what are some, th what's something that you want students who are currently at Rockhurst or are going to maybe be coming to Rockhurst in the next couple mm -hmm. of years, what do you want them to know um, about your specific role there and mm -hmm. just kind of the, the program in general? Yeah, I think we have really great uh, programs in STEM at Rockhurst. Mm -hmm. Aside from biology, which is the, the program that I um, teach in, well, within biology, you can choose kind of your own track, your own mm -hmm. major. So you might be interested in biology, but after those first couple of years, you can kind of specialize in the course work that you take, mm -hmm. um, maybe more organismal or more environmental or conservation based or more cell or molecular based. So I think that that's a really great option for students that they get to dabble in all of those areas, but mm -hmm. then they can kind of take a couple more classes to kind of tailor their degree to their, their area of interest and maybe their strengths. Um, the other programs that we offer, we have biochemistry, we have chemistry, we have physics, we have engineering, uh, math, data analytics, and so we have a lot of STEM focused degrees uh, at, at Rockhurst, and I think that the great thing about uh, an institution like Rockhurst is that it is a small community. Mm -hmm. Most of the classes are pretty small, 24 students or fewer, and the faculty really genuinely care about student success and, and want you to be successful in your classes. And so I think those are some of the great things about um, thinking about Rockhurst mm -hmm. as a kind of a smaller community and not just you know lost in the crowd, which is yeah. what I kind of started with is how I felt at a big university. So that smaller school gives you that more intimate feeling. You have people that you get to know because you have them multiple times in your mm -hmm. classes. Um, and they support you as a student. So that's what I would want students to know. I totally empathize yeah. with that. I also went to a small liberal arts school in Illinois. So I understand, I think it's important to you to have that organic relationship building, not just with your fellow students, but also your professors. It's really important in yeah. growth. So that's awesome. So tell me more about um, what are you excited about mm -hmm. from, from a professional standpoint or from a personal one? What are you excited to see when it comes to women entering the STEM ecosystem here regionally and, and what's kind of on the horizon that you're paying attention to? Well, aside from my professor position, I serve in this role as science coordinator, mm -hmm. and I kind of already mentioned some of the programs that um, I kind of coordinate and mm -hmm. offer and organize on campus. And I think that it's really important for our young students, um, high schoolers and, and early college students to realize that we have a really robust and rich STEM ecosystem regionally, mm -hmm. and that 
students not only can they get an, a really great education in STEM here in Kansas City or in the metro area, but they can stay here and work in really fulfilling and rewarding jobs um, across all different types of, of STEM sectors, mm -hmm. from engineering to um, biopharmaceuticals, biotech, uh, veterinary medicine. We have so many options here at Metro that there's plenty of space for our students to enter the workforce here and have rewarding careers. Yeah, and I, I totally agree with that. And that's something that I'm trying with this series and other programs that we've got at the library, we're trying to get more young people to know you don't have to go to the East or West Coast yeah. to find a really great job in a science field that's also here. Um, so what do you think we need then? So from, you know, you're kind of at the intersection of education and workforce then, mm -hmm. right? Um, what do you think that more companies, um, more organizers need to do to really take the next step? Oh, um, yeah. for our region? That's such a great question. Mm -hmm. It's one of those things that I have been working towards and I have a bigger picture mm -hmm. in mind. Uh, one thing that I think would be great is to have kind of a metro-wide um, industry internship program. Yes. Uh, we have worked really hard at Rockhurst to find partners at our local research institutions so that our students can go and get research experience in the lab um, at a, a big research institution mm -hmm. where we don't have those sorts of resources. You can do some research at Rockhurst, but uh, they, they're going to get a lot um, more depth in their research experience if they can go to one of the big research institutions here in the mm -hmm. Kansas City area. But we also have uh, lots of, of companies that um, if we could get kind of a regional uh, internship opportunity uh, for these students that we're educating here so that we can retain them in the workforce. Mm -hmm. That's kind of one of my big goals and my big hopes. Yeah, and I'm, I'm with you in that goal and hope. <laughs> <laughs> I absolutely think that we need to do that and I think we need to do it quicker, right, mm -hmm. than what we're, than the pace that we're on right now. Um, so okay, so if we, if that is kind of our, our future state, what do you think the future of STEM will look like then in the next five, ten years if we can get these things right? Yeah. Oh, that's a really great question. I just think that there's so much potential for the Kansas City region for um, all of the STEM disciplines, mm -hmm. but definitely supporting women advancing in their education and their mm -hmm. careers and retaining them in the workforce. So uh, I would hope to see, um, you know, closing those gaps in uh, uh, disparity from proportion of, of females represented in the STEM workforce. Mm -hmm. That's definitely something that we have worked on over the last 10, 20 years, and we've made gains, but women are still underrepresented in the workforce for, for STEM. And so I'd really like to continue to work towards um, bridging that gap. Yeah, that makes yeah. sense. I'm with you on that too. Well, thank you for your time. I'm very excited to see the yeah. work that you do and kind of the longevity of this program with Rockers. So I'm glad that we're neighbors. We're right down the street from one yeah. another, and I hope we can collaborate more. Thanks thank for the you. time, Joanna. You're welcome.